Pleased to be joined by senior communication strategist at Power Group and host of the O Show, Hamilton's current affairs talk show, Laura Babcock. Good afternoon, Laura. Hi, it's great to be here. Well, we're a week away from the election and Hamilton has already suffered a voter breach. Um, I mean, give me the Reader's Digest version here. What happened? Well, it's actually been a series of events, and to put them quickly, the ballots went out for the mail-in voting late. So imagine if you're someone maybe immunocompromised or have some mobility challenges, you decided in a pandemic, I'm going to get a mail-in vote this time, I'm going to register and do it that way. The ballots came out late, and then some of the ballots that came out said use the pen provided with no pen in it. So that caused people to reach out to the O show and to the city going, well, wait a second, I don't even know how to do this legally. And then just when the city realized, uh oh, some people aren't going to get their ballots in time, we have to send out communication to tell them, you know, you have to go to a certain location by the 21st in person to drop it off if it's going to be counted in this consequential election. Then they found out that they accidentally copied everyone's email into an open email field. And you know what that's like if you're sending an email. If you want to copy people, you put it in the CC line. You want to hide the names, you put it in the BCC, blind copy. Well, the city didn't do that. They messed up large. And so now at least over 400 people had their names, their spouses, the fact that they're, you know, mail-in voters leaked everywhere. That's a major, major privacy breach. And uh, the city clerk has now come out and tried to explain it. They're going to investigate it. But yeah, it's a really bad look for the city. And it makes voters doubt whether or not they can participate, which I think is the worst part of it, right? We want people to vote in this election. It's so important. Yeah, this is already an election that is going to suffer from massive voter fatigue, considering we've been through a couple very recently. So coming out of this, though, I mean, the names are out there. You can't just hit, you know, return the email back of uh, people on this list who are a very vulnerable group, actually, being perhaps immunocompromised, you know, or not wanting to get out of their house, trying to vote by mail. Should they be concerned? Yeah, they should be concerned. And there is a privacy expert who spoke to that. Uh, it's out there now. And those lists were widely shared before the city clerk sent out another email saying that they'd caught the error. Everybody had seen them. I'd been sent them people, you know, people said, Laura, this is a news story. And then Joey Coleman, of course, broke the story and it got huge attention right across the country because this is a major breach. This is not just some small error. I mean, even not putting a pen in and saying use the pen included is a pretty big deal in an election. Uh, but to do this, yeah, these people are vulnerable. So there are are places where they can lodge complaints. There's integrity commissioners that they can lodge complaints to. You never know. There might even be a lawsuit in the making in this. I mean, if your privacy is breached by your own municipal government in an election, some people find that to be a really terrible thing to happen to them. It didn't happen to me, but I have a lot of sympathy for people who now feel exposed. Yeah, it's already a struggle to get people to vote. This is the last thing that the government wants. Uh, Laura, while we have you here, though, the Hamilton mayor race is extremely interesting. I mean, Fred Eisenberg not running for re-election. We've seen formal provincial NDP leader Andrea Horvath pulling a Patrick Brown, shall we say, and jumping into a municipal race. Is she a slam dunk winner just because of name recognition? You would think she would be. And when she first jumped into the race, I welcomed her in. I was excited we might have our first woman mayor and it was going to be a real race because Keenan Loomis, the head of the Chamber of Commerce, had already left his job to run a serious campaign. And we had Bob Bertina, former mayor and MP in the race. So we had some big contenders this time around. Um, but Andrea came out of the gate. You know, I had her on my show. We did an interview. I think there were some people who were frustrated that she just got their vote as an MPP and then decided to leave that job and, and force a by election, which is expensive. So there was some frustration around that, uh, which hurt, I think, as everyone watching who watched the, the TV debate on Cable 14, there's some tough exchanges there, some comments made uh, by Andrea and by Keenan, but I think in this case, by Andrea that, that really concerned people about how long you live in Hamilton and what that might mean. So there's been some bumps that have happened and on Keenan's side as well. But I think as we're coming into the final week, it really is a clear choice for people. There's two top candidates. It'll be fascinating to see whether it goes to Keenan, who's not a politician, who's saying change, and Andrea, who of course everyone knows, who's saying I've got the experience. So we'll be watching closely to see who gets this. It is one week from today. It's October 24th. People will hopefully go to the polls. At least they won't have to mail in and expose their uh, identification if they do That's it that right. way. Laura Babcock, a pleasure having you on. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Anytime.